Would you like to finally finish setting up your QuickBooks Online account for your home finances? Well, then watch this video because we will cover registers and reports. If you have any questions about this topic, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to help you. And of course, if you feel the video helped you, I hope you will click like and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos that come out all the time. The last part of the QuickBooks Online setup is to examine the register windows and take a look at the reports. These two windows will make navigating QuickBooks Online as easy as possible. The register window is where you will put in the transactions and the reports is where you will see the result or the output of the transactions. There is a register window for each bank and credit card type of account in the chart of accounts. We simply record the transaction in the proper account, register, and your financial reports will be accurate. So the register window looks like something that your grandparents used to carry around with them when they would go to the supermarket. It's a window that's supposed to look like the old-fashioned register books in the days before the computer. Your grandparents or great-grandparents would take it out every time they wrote a check or made a deposit so that they could keep their own running balance of how much they had in their account. Now, in QuickBooks, you record transactions in the window that looks like the register and the results accumulate and get sorted and totaled and put in the report that we spoke about earlier today the trial balance. Now for home finance you can set up some shortcuts. For registers it only takes two clicks from the time you log in to open the register window and it's easy to jump from one accounts register to the other. Now these are the four or five operating type of accounts that we put into the chart of accounts. In other words, these are the accounts that we pay money from. And of course we have to keep separate records of each account's balance. So here's what you would do. If you logged in and you're in the dashboard, you would simply open the chart of accounts in either of the two ways that we learned how to open the chart of accounts. We could go to the left and click accounting, chart of accounts. Now once we're in the chart of accounts, all we have to do is move the mouse over the row of the account whose register we wish to view and go across the row, for example Chase Bank, and we click view register and our register window opens up. Now let's close this little tutorial here and take a look at our friend, the bank register. Notice that the titles of the columns are the names of the fields of data that you would put in when you were, would be recording a check or a deposit or anything else. Now if you look here on this left pull down menu and click, you see that these are the different types of transactions that we can record into the Chase Bank Register. And that's because if we click the pull down arrow, you can see that Chase Bank is a bank type of account. So these would be the column headings, and when we click the pull down, these would be the different types of transactions that we can record. If we click the pull down arrow at the top, we can choose a different bank accounts register to record that accounts transactions into. And if we click the pull down again, you notice we can also open the register of one of our credit card accounts. Now when we open up a credit card type of account in the register, notice the names of the columns change. You will also notice that the pull down arrow changes what types of transactions can be recorded into this register. 
If we go back to the bank register up here for Chase Bank, you can see that if you're doing home finance and using QuickBooks for home finance, the only types of transactions you need are check when you're paying money and deposit when you're putting money into the account or recording an increase, let's say, into the account. Now, you should know that the check transaction and the expense transaction are exactly the same. You're going to put the check number here or the expense reference number in this field anyway, and then this field is the date, and then of course you put the money amounts and so on. And that's how you manage your registers whenever you pay money or get money, you simply record it there, and whenever you charge one of your credit card uh, accounts or pay one of your credit card accounts, you simply choose that register and record it the same exact way. And we will experience recording transactions starting in the very next video. The reports that we use in QuickBooks Online for home finance give us the ability to see the results of the transactions that we recorded into the register. We will save the few that we need in the Custom Reports Center. This way, we will see everything very quickly. So what reports do we need if we're using QuickBooks Online for home finance? Well, the main report we need is the trial balance. This is the main financial report. It shows the total balance of every account in the chart of accounts. So, how do we put up the trial balance? The only way to open the Reports section of QuickBooks Online is to go to the left panel and click Reports. Now when you first go there, you automatically are sent to the list of standard reports. These are all the reports that QuickBooks Online makes available. We will find the ones that we need in the standard area and then we will save them in the custom area so we can get to them much more quickly. Click Standard and scroll all the way down to where you see the trial balance. It would be in the section of For My Accountant, which is at the very bottom. And we find towards the very bottom the trial balance. Double click. Now, of course it's empty because we have not yet recorded any transactions. But we're going to go to the top left and click the Pull Down Date option and we are going to choose all dates. Click on it. Now the trial balance looks the way we need it to look for the course. We now click Run Report so that it acknowledges the change that we made. And now we're going to save this trial balance with the change of dates into the Custom Report section. Click Save Customization, and we don't really need to change the name, but you could type something different in here if you wanted to. Now we click Save, and now you see if we click Reports and go to Custom Reports, the trial balance is on the list. Now, what else do we have to add to the Reports section? What about the Profit and Loss? Well, the Profit and Loss has the same numbers as the trial balance because it has the results of the accounts, but it only shows the income and expense accounts and there's a reason for that that we spoke about in the prior video when we discussed the profit and loss. Let's go ahead and add it to the list. We click again reports and it's from the standard section of reports. It happens to be right here in this favorite. It's right on the top. So we click double click profit and loss. And again, we have to make it look the way we need it to look. So we click the pull down arrow and choose all dates. And then to acknowledge the change, we click Run Report. Now it changed it from that date range to all dates. Now that it looks the way we need it to look, we click Save Customization, don't bother changing the name, and we just click Save. Now when we click Reports and go to the Custom section, we have the Profit and Loss as well. The two final reports that we will set up 
might be helpful to you as you look at the results of your transactions. We're going to put up transaction list by vendor and transaction list by customer. So we click reports, go back to the standard section, scroll down to the section of customers, and the very last one, or towards the end, transaction list by customer. Double click, change the pull down date range to all dates, click run report, save customization, and we're not changing the name, so just save. Now we click reports. In custom reports, it's been added. Again, click reports standard. Scroll down to the vendor section. And expenses and vendors, transaction list by vendor. Click, change the date to all dates, run report, save customization, and save. And now we will do the last part of the home finance setup, putting in the name and address of the person whose finances we are managing in QuickBooks Online. We will open the account or company settings window and we will put in this information. This way all of the documents and reports that print from this QuickBooks Online account will have the proper name and address. And it's very simple. We click the cog wheel, go across to account and settings and click. Now in the account and settings window there are different categories. We will click the top category. In every category there are different sections of settings. In the top section where it says company name, click the pencil tool and in the top field type Joe Schmo. Okay, and click Save. Scroll down a little to the Address section, click the Pencil Tool, and change the address to what was on the screen a moment ago. 1787 Meadow Lane, East Meadow, New York 11554 okay and then you would change Worcester Mass to um, East Meadow New York 11554 you could always reopen this and change it change the state to New York boom now in this section we click save right? and at the very bottom right click done and now if you click the dashboard you see that it has the right name instead of crash course setup.